Big news this morning. So Keir Starmer is going to be introducing his uh, big idea to stop the boats. Yes, yes. Um, I've got my thoughts on it. It just sounds like it's going to replace the so-called war on drugs, which obviously we all know is a massive failure yeah. because you deal with one dealer or you smash one gang, there's plenty of others who are willing to take their places. So, um, yeah, well, let's hear about... It's naive, though, isn't it? But he, Labour will sort of launch their plans, apparently, to tackle the boat crisis. And this, I thought, what he's saying... I don't know. I think it, it, Rwanda's working. There's elements of it that are working. Why would you get rid of it? You keep that, then bring your plans in. It doesn't make sense. It seems foolhardy. Mm. So he's going to unveil, Sir Keir Starmer, stronger new counter-terror powers uh, that will effectively treat people like... Uh, sorry, people smugglers like terrorists. Mm. And it, his plans will be supported by around about 1,000 additional officers, so more bureaucracy uh, by MI5. And, of course, they'll scrap the Rwanda plan, which we mentioned altogether, which seems uh, madness if it's working, but, uh, you know. Mm. But can either party tackle the small boat crisis, the Tories or Labour? Joining us now is political editor of HuffPost UK, Kevin Schofield, and political correspondent at The Spectator, James Hill. Good morning to you both. Uh, Kevin, let's go to you first. Uh, as I was just saying to Nana, it kind of feels like Sir Keir Starmer's pending announcement will be similar to the war on drugs, where you kind of ignore the people actually crossing the channel and you go after the smuggling gangs. But you crack one gang, another is just going to appear. Exactly. All the meanwhile, the boats will continue crossing. Yeah, I mean, it's a massive challenge. You know, the government has wrestled with this for a long time, and yet this year uh, the number of crossings is up on last year, uh, despite the Rwanda bill being being passed. So, yeah, Labour have obviously made it very clear since the very beginning of the Rwanda policy that they were against it. They will scrap it if they win the next election. And, uh, yeah, now they've come up with their own plan. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. It, I wouldn't say it's a silver bullet. I don't think a silver bullet on this problem actually exists. Um, I guess it's worth a try. Um, and if you're going to cancel Rwanda altogether, then you've got to come up with something. I just wonder whether there'll be more detail in the actual speech. What's been trailed still seems a little bit thin to me. Mm. James, what's your thoughts on it? Do you, do you think Keir Starmer is on, on the right path with his plan? Well, I mean, you know, the Labour likes to talk about smashing the criminal gangs as if the Conservatives aren't also committed to that. Uh, you know, I think, look, we can have a discussion around the powers and additional funding that goes towards that. I mean, that's, you know, it's difficult to argue against that. But, uh, you know, the idea, for instance, that the government uh, isn't committed to doing that, you can argue they're not doing enough, mm. but they're certainly trying to tackle the people smugglers, um, is, you know, a fallacy. I think the interesting thing, really, is the way in which uh, Keir Starmer, with all these different problems, tends to come up with the idea for a sort of new body. So, for instance, he's announced this new board Border Security Commander, uh, Border Security Commander, New Force. I mean, that's not too dissimilar to, I think, what Rishi Sunak announced to two years ago with the Small Boats Operational Command. So uh, I'm really not too, too, too sure, other than Rwanda, what the real substantive differences are going to be uh, in an election. So as Kevin says, we need to see more detail. Um, but I think it's an interesting choice of, Kevin, of, of Keir Starmer to always go for a kind of new body. Uh, I think in some ways he is a bit of sort of Mr. Blobby. He's a, he's a very politician who likes the blob in the kind of way in which he chooses to address these difficult uh, issues. And I think that's a, a definite breach for the Conservatives. So I'd be interested to see how that will work out. Well, yes, yeah, oh, so... Bureaucracy, isn't it? More bureaucracy, more people. A thousand more people, he's saying. Yeah, well, D Dominic Cummings wrote an interesting column today about the fact that he reckons Sir Keir Starmer will just be ordered around by the civil service. He just loves being told what to do. But, Kevin, uh, Sir Keir, in his speech later today, we're going to bring that to you live mm. just after around 10 o'clock, he will say that it, they're going to rely on closer cooperation with the European Union. But we already send France half a billion a year to stop the dinghies. Um, some great exposés by the likes of the Sun newspaper have shown that, in actual fact, all the, the workers meant to be stopping boats on the French beaches are down at the local working men's club sinking shots. So we can't trust the French. The rest of the EU, let's be frank, hate us. How uh, is the Labour government going to change that? Well, I guess he will hope that um, European... Oh, I think we've lost look you. At his own frozen. track record. Clearly, he was against Brexit. He campaigned... Oh, sorry... Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're back on. Carry Hello? on. We're listening. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, so they'll look at his, his uh, track record of opposing Brexit, of working to try and get a second referendum, if you remember, when he was shadow Brexit secretary. And they will think maybe this is a guy that we can work with in a way that we can't work with a Conservative government who introduced Brexit with a Prime Minister who supported Brexit. I guess we've got to hope that there'll be just a change, change of vibe, really, between uh, Europe and uh, the UK if there is a Labour government. But again, it does put you in the hands of the EU, it, it's pretty much up to them whether they want to work with us. And you make a very good point there. I remember last year when Rishi Sunak struck this new deal with France, um, 
And yet, here we are, as I said earlier, the, the number of crossings are going up, and yet we're spending, sending an awful lot of money to the French government. So, yeah, but you could thus say far, that. nothing has worked. You could say so, that yeah. about the relationship with Boris Johnson and Macron and the French, but you can't really say that about Rishi Sunak. He's got a good relationship with the French already. I, I have a feeling that Keir Starmer is slightly deluded on this plan because it sounds to me like a lot more bureaucracy. He's talking, you're talking about costs. How much will a thousand more people cost to, to do this so-called job? Um, and what is it that they're going to do? And then what about the people that are here? Does that mean there's an amnesty for the people that are here? Because won't he need a third country anyway? I mean, that's to either of you. James, I mean, won't he need it? He'll need it. Well, the danger is, of course, you know, uh, Labour likes to say we're going to clear the asylum backlog. But, of course, that obviously means are you going to accept those people? If you accept mm. them, the Conservatives will say, well, that is an effective amnesty for illegal migration for coming here illegally. And if you don't accept them, where are you going to send them? Uh, and this is the kind of big issue with migration, which is that it's not sort of, you know, trying to stop people before they arrive. It's once they're here, what do you actually do with them? Uh, and I think Labour will have to make those difficult choices about either choosing to give an effective amnesty or choosing where to send these people. I think you touched on a really interesting point just slightly before this, which is about Europe. And of course, I think it's worth the Conservatives keep making the point, Europe is having this a lot worse than us. There are a lot more crossings to the Mediterranean, to Italy. So my question is, why on earth would the Europeans want any kind of deal that would involve um, you know, them taking our people, our arrivals, but we don't take any of theirs? I think that they have it much worse and I think actually what is so striking about this is that, you know, the UK isn't sort of an outlier on this. We are acting uh, with the same tandem as Europe on this. Um, they they want to get a harsher crackdown on asylum and migration because this is a worldwide phenomenon. So I think that, you know, it's a mistake to think, oh, we can have good cooperation with Europe. Europe, if anything, is having it worse than us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite right. And uh, as I have said, Europe and the EU, most countries hate us. They can't forgive us for leaving their gravy train club and having independent thought of wanting to go by ourselves. Uh, I, you know, I, I just can't stress it enough. So why would they want to help us with our migration problem? I just don't get it. Kevin, let me ask you about something slightly different. Wes Streeting this morning, the Shadow Health Secretary, he reckons Labour is in discussions with more Tory MPs willing to defect, of course, off the back of Natalie Elphick uh, down in Dover, who will be with Sakir Starmer at his speech later this morning. Is he just calling the Tories bluff? Do you think there are Tory MPs lining up to cross the, uh, the floor? I think there are. We wrote a story last week actually saying that uh, there was about a handful were in discussions with uh, Labour. I, I was told at the time that it was hush hush, so I'm quite surprised that West Streeting has just come out and <laughs> revealed it. But um, but yeah, I think that is true. I think we've got maybe six months to the next election. I wouldn't be surprised if we get at least another one defector. Uh, I can't tell you who it, who it might be, but yeah, there are definitely discussions going on. Whether those are MPs who are already standing down or whether there are M uh, Tory MPs who are looking at their majorities and thinking, well, unless I switch to Labour, I'm not coming back again. Who knows? But, uh, but yeah, I think there's, those discussions are, without a doubt, they are taking place. James, do you know who they may be? Can you spill the beans? Well, given that the last defector was a hard right, you're a sceptic member of the <laughs> ERG, uh, I'm just glad Mark Francois has come out and said he's not going to be defecting. Uh, I mean, I think at GB News, you need to check with Jacob Rees-Mogg. Uh, anyone's welcoming Keir Starmer's uh, Labour Party, apart from real socialists. Well, seems. they were talking about Nigel Farage, weren't they, yesterday? <laughs> it's rubbish. He's not going to do well, that. I think uh, Nigel Farage you know, can give a good speech, so I'm not sure how many of those are found with the Labour Party. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think it's one to watch. Certainly, Labour wants to play up this narrative. Of course they do, and cause havoc with the enemy side. Well, why would anybody, uh, to be fair, we're streeting. He's the guy that called people who support Suzanne Hall white supremacist. I remember his tweet many years ago about Jan Moir, the, the Daily Mail columnist, uh, talking about her going under, being under a train. Uh, he has apologised for that. But, but, but this is somebody who's made comments like that. I'm, I was actually talking to somebody as I was getting ready today in the dressing room and saying the comment that he wrote about Suzanne Hall, have any of you or would any of you ever dare tweet something like that? I don't know anyone that would. So I wouldn't take anything that Wes Streeting says. I'd take everything he says with a pinch of salt. I don't trust, I don't believe a word he says. Do you? Would you ever tweet anything like that? I, I was a big fan of West Streeting up until a, uh, about around a month or so ago when he stood at the dispatch box. Kevin, I'm not sure what you make of this. He stood at the dispatch box with his Labour MPs behind him, laughing at the fact that NatCon event in Brussels was being mm. shut down. A total attack on free speech, which anyone from the right, if it happened to their adversaries on the left, would call out straight away. You know, I don't agree with you, but I respect and will fight for your right to say it. But West Streeting giggled like a juvenile schoolboy. And then, of course, he had the tweeting 
incident as well. I just don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, no, I think I think that was uh, a mistake. I have to say, yeah, you can absolutely just say you can not agree with someone, uh, you can not agree with what they say, but you know, sending in the police to shut them down, I think that is clearly a step too far, and it's not something that, regardless of your political affiliation, is not something that, that, that you should possibly support. James. Yeah, absolutely. I think West Reading is very talented in lots of ways, but sometimes he's a bit uh, intemperate with his language. And I think he got a bit carried away at the dispatch box. And I think that tweet was poorly judged. But it's, should we look deeper into it? Yeah. Because Sir Keir Starmer says the, the Labour Party has changed. But clearly, mm. clearly they haven't. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's almost student gutter politics, that kind of thing. And I spoke to a couple of Labour MPs since and said, do you back... I mean, Jonathan, Jonathan Ashworth earlier this week, I said, do you back or condemn what West Reading says? And he said it was just made in the heat of the moment. Well, Why is that acceptable? That's not acceptable. What? Angela Rayner, uh, what was that whole spiel that Angela Rayner said? Homophobic, misogynistic, banana republic, Etonian, what was it, racist scum. This is, scum. if I used yeah. that language on my Twitter feed about anyone, I would be fired. I think I'd be yeah. fired, wouldn't you? You know, they would be, be cancelled, yeah. They'd be talking to me seriously about those sort of wordings. I don't get why these Labour MPs in particular are just getting away with anything. I think one well, day... I think, I think an Angela Rayner, sorry... James, I think I think, I think Angela Rayner was severely criticised, and I think was quite chastened, um, and she will not be repeating that again. That's for sure. I think that was a very ill-judged remark, and I'm pretty sure that she deeply regrets it now. But it will obviously be be brought up again, no doubt, during the election campaign. Yeah. I dare say, it's not it's not the type of language that we want to see in our political debate. But that's only because they got caught out there. That's because they got caught out. This is what what they're like, and some of them are prepared to say it out loud. So. I'm just very concerned about some of these politicians. Just... Last word to you, James. Yeah, I think one day West Treating is going to be standing for Labour leader, so uh, he just needs to watch some of the comments, I'd say. Interesting. OK, Kevin Schofield, James Haley, thanks very much.